This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. I'm the righteousness of God. No matter what happens, I am the righteousness of God. Reject these doubts. I believe that'll stop the progression. I mean, you know, there needs to be some grace moving into our neighborhoods and our communities. Your position in Christ is not sustained by your keeping the law of God. It's sustained by your faith in the finished works of Christ. Your value and your worth is based on the fact that you were God's idea. Register today at CreflodollarMinistries.org. Has it ever seemed like no matter how hard you've tried, you just can't get it right? The key is to stop depending on our own self-efforts and depend only on Jesus. Now, through His Spirit, He will guide us into truth. Stay tuned for today's message on the number one enemy to God's faith. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And verse 9. And in verse 9, he says this, For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more, everybody say much more. Much more, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. Now, the ministration of condemnation is a result of operating under the law. When a person operates under the law of Moses, condemnation is going to be the, the result. And yet, before the covenant of grace, there were lots of glorious manifestations. Red Sea opening, a man outrunning horses and chariots. There were lots of manifestations even under the ministration of condemnation. But he says here that much more, say it again, much more. Much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. So this, this, this ministration of righteousness, once we understand that it's not righteous by what you do to be right, but it is righteousness based on what Jesus did, and you believe it, he says, from that will exceed more glory than you've ever seen before. More manifestations just because you have finally settled it. I am believing what has already been done. Today, in our world today, the ministry of righteousness far exceeds the ministry of condemnation where glory is concerned, where manifestation is concerned. Across the whole world, eyes are being enlightened to this glorious gospel of grace. I mean, it's being preached, ladies and gentlemen. It's being preached around the world, and people are being enlightened. The coming revival of God's abundance of grace and the coming revival of this gift of righteousness will be like nothing we have ever witnessed. The ministry of righteousness is the ministry of the Spirit who guides us into the truth that we are the sons of God like our elder brother Jesus Christ. The ministry of righteousness has been designed to try to convince you and I that we are just like our elder brother, Jesus Christ. Now, the Bible says, as he is, come on, so are we, where? Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm in Christ. I'm just like him. See, this is the thing that religion keeps fighting you. 
Jesus wants you to accept this truth. You're just like him. Religion keeps telling you, not quite. And it's going to require faith for you to wake up one morning and finally come to the place of realizing, okay, God, I'm in you. I'm just like you. As he is, so are we in this world. I'm just like Jesus. I mean, all of hell will begin to tremble the day we recognize that we are just like Jesus. The ministry of righteousness is the ministry of the Holy Spirit trying to convince you that you're just like your elder brother. Wow. Say it again, I'm just like Jesus. Now, when we have a revelation of that truth, nothing will be impossible for us, and the church will rise up to be who she is called to be. You'll finally be who you're called to be because now you are walking in the right identity. You are in Christ. So everything that happened to Christ, you are a co-person. In other words, when he died, you died. When he was resurrected, you were resurrected. When he was seated on the right hand of God the Father, you took a seat on the right hand of God the Father. This is a powerful revelation that if we get this revelation, this one revelation that I, as a result of being born again, I've been made righteous and I've been made just like my elder brother. And you know what stops you from believing that? Your behavior. And you know what else stops you from believing that? Religious church. You just can't believe that you have passed out of darkness into the marvelous light and you're just like Jesus because you keep looking at yourself from the physical view and you don't understand that you're in Christ, you're sealed in him, you're one spirit with him, you're just like him. I guarantee you the day you accept this truth that I'm just like Jesus, nothing will ever be the same again. Amen. You ought to be walking in this earth like you made it. Now, I know you didn't make it, but you got to start walking around like you made it. <laughs> so tonight, I want to talk to you about the number one enemy to God's favor. The number one enemy to God's favor. Let's begin in Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 5 the number one enemy to God's favor. God wants to explode his favor on your life like you've never seen it. God wants to do stuff you've never seen before, praise the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. But it starts with that one revelation. Say it again, as he is, as he is so, are we so are we in this world. In this world. I'm, just like I'm just like Jesus. Oh, that's radical. That's radical. Say it again, I'm just like Jesus. Somebody said, that ain't scripture. You just, you just said the scripture. Say it again, as he is, so are we. As he is, so are we. Why are we in this world? We as he is. I want to do something even more radical. Turn to your neighbor and say, hello, Jesus. Now, some of y'all looked at each other strange. I mean, you ain't no Jesus. <laughs> see, you got to understand he's trying to get you to see yourself as you are in him. Now, look at Isaiah chapter 60, and let's read this. Very, this is a prophetic word that was given to Israel, and that word has come to pass. What we are reading in this book has come to pass in this day. Arise. Now, that's an interesting word. It means to change your posture and change your position. In other words, when you arise, you, you, you move away from the present position you're in. Now, he's prophetically getting ready to talk about your position in yourself, changing from that to your position in Christ. Arise.
arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. That's prophetic. I'm going to show you in a moment that somebody says, what's the light? I'm going to show you a scripture out of the book of John that says Jesus is the light. So it says, change your posture, change your position, for the light is come, and now that the light has come and you've changed your posture and position and now you're in that light, the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. The glory of the Lord is the manifestations of God. The glory of the Lord is the manifestations of God. We're about to see manifestations of God's glory like the planet has never seen before. Now watch this now. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. Have you seen that? Yeah. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen up on you. Oh, my goodness. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. I see why he was prophesying to Israel, because Israel was in darkness at the time, and he says the solution to Israel not believing in, in Jesus is that the light is going to come upon the Gentiles, and the Gentiles will lead them out of that situation. He says in verse 4, lift up thine eyes round about and see. Oh, they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from the far, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. There's a wealth, that word forces mean wealth. I thought it was talking about materials before. He's talking about the wealth that comes as a result of your position in Christ. Amen. There's a wealth that comes as a result of being in Christ. The light is the glory of Jesus. Now, what have you been sowing? What have you been planting? How often have you put off what God's been trying to get you to do and try to intelligently lecture God on his word? My job is not to change you. My job is to love you. God's job is to change you. Now, I heard a guy say one time, he says, you know, you really need to listen to your elders, not because they're right all the time, but because they have great experience, a lot of experience at being wrong. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Romans chapter 5 and 20 says something that lets me know everything I just told you is at hand. Romans chapter 5 and verse 20, forgive me, Romans 5 and 20. He says, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. That word abound means to increase. The law entered, the law of Moses came so that the offense might increase, so that sin might increase. But where sin increased, now, look at this past year, where sin increased. Now, when you think sin, you're thinking, you know, you're thinking all of the big stuff, but where sin increased, and it did increase, I saw racism, more intense racism than, than I've ever seen or even heard of. I saw the spirit of division like I've never seen. Where sin increased, the promise is that grace will much more increase. I got to believe, I got to believe that I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord 
in the land of the living. I got to believe that we're going to see much more where sin increased, the grace of God is about to increase. Unmerited favors are about to increase. You're about to see an increase of an abundance of God's favor, and you'll have no idea how to explain to people why it's happening to you except to say, this is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Look at John chapter 8, verse 12. I, uh... I want you to get this. I want you to see this because we keep making the same mistake over and over and over and over and over again. And we're expecting for these manifestations and prophecies to come to pass, but we keep, we keep employing the number one enemy to God's favor and God's grace. I believe it's going to increase. I don't want you to employ the number one enemy to that increase showing up in your life. John chapter 8 and 12, then spake, spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So when you look at light, Jesus says, I am the light. And if he follows me, if, you, if, you, if you'll follow me, if you'll believe me, if you'll walk with me, you will never walk in darkness another day in your life. Now, listen to me carefully now. I want to break through all the symbolism. Jesus is the light of the world. When you got born again, you got in Jesus. And now in Jesus, you're healed, delivered, righteous, perfect, all of these things because you're now in Jesus. Before you got in Jesus, you were in darkness. Let's break through the symbolism. You were in that old nature. You were in that sin nature. When you were in that sin nature, you could only produce sin. But you are no longer living inside of that sin nature. You are now living in the light. You're now living in Christ. There are benefits. There's an enormous advantage that you have now that you're in Christ. An enormous advantage, but you don't know it. Somebody says, how do I get grace to work for me? You've got to, first of all, realize and become aware of the things that have been made available to you, and then you got to keep it on your mind. you got to become aware of what's been made available to you, and then you got to keep it on your mind. I'm the righteousness of God. I am now aware that in Christ I am righteous, and that's what stays on my mind. I am now aware that in Christ I am redeemed, so that's what stays on my mind. And what he says is, if you'll follow me, he says, first of all, you will not walk in darkness because, listen, you'll be free from that. Jesus is the light. The light here does not expose sin, but rather it reveals the perfection of the blood of Jesus in taking away our sins or taking away that sin nature. So you're not reading here, well, I'm the light of the world, I came to expose sin. No, he says, I'm the light of the world, and, and, and I didn't come to expose sin, but I came to reveal to you the perfection of the blood of Jesus. I, I'm the light of the world, and I came to show you that through the blood of Jesus, you are now in me. Does everybody follow me now? You're now in me because I'm the light of the world. I've taken away that sin nature. I've taken away that old man. You are in me. The light is to show you, glory to God, that you will never be the same as you were when you were in the darkness, in the sin nature. And he's trying to show you that in Christ, you are different. You are righteous. You are perfect. Now, let me show you this scripture in John 12, verse 46. It's, it's, it's dealing with light as well while you're at John. John 12, 46. John 12, 46. Glory to God. Is everybody with me? We are not going to repeat the same mistake. John 12, 46. I am come, I am come a light in the world that whosoever believeth on me shall not abide in darkness. What is he saying? If you believe on Jesus enough to get born again, and to get in Christ, to get born again and to get in Christ, 
Once you're in Christ, you will never be in darkness again. Once you're in Christ, you'll never be in that old man again. Now listen, folks, we still sin, but we will never be in the darkness of that sin nature. You still sin, but you'll never, that is so, that, it, bothers, it bothers me when I'm in church and I say you still sin, people get shocked. Don't you know that? <laughs> you do know that, don't you? I don't know why you want to get sanctimonious and pious now. Oh, no, I don't. Yes, you do. <laughs> See, the, 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 the reason why you still sin is because you're still renewing your mind and you still got that old program from that old sin nature, and until you change this program, you're still going to be sinning. And that's why God doesn't want you to, 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 to work on not sinning, but believe that you're no longer in that sin nature. Because if you believe that you no longer have the root that produces apples, if you believe you no longer have the root that produces oranges, if you believe you got a different root, then you'll see a different fruit. I'm asking you to believe now that you're born again, you're in Christ. Now that you're born again, you're in Christ. Now that you're born again, you're in Christ. It's identity first, behavior next. It's not behavior first, so you can be identified, right? It's, it's identity first, behavior next. The day you got born again, a miracle took place. You, you got in Jesus and you were made perfect, made righteous, made holy, made redeemed. Why? Because you got in Jesus. You were not made righteous because of something you did. You were made righteous because of something he did. You, you spell religion D-O, do. You spell Christianity, D-O-N-E, done. I, sometimes once I can cut your head open, just pour this on the inside of your head. You're trying to do something that Jesus has already done, and in him accomplishes everything you've been trying to do. But you got to believe you in him. And your identity now is based on it being in him. Look at 1 John chapter 1 and 7. 1 John chapter 1 and 7. Your identity is based on being in him. Who I am is based on me being in him. I am born again, and the day I got born again, I relocated myself. I'm in him. Verse 7 says, but if we walk in the light, how do you walk in the light? Who's the light? Jesus. Jesus. So if, if, if you walk in Jesus, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, this, this word cleanses is a verb that it, 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 it gives the picture of it continues to cleanse. In other words, it's not how we walk, but where we walk. This is not talking about how we walk. Oh, y'all got to walk good. No, he's talking about where we walk. We walking in Christ. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not, it's not how you walk, but where you walk. Religion keeps t getting you to deal with how you walk. And, he, and, 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 and God wants you to, to learn about where you walk. Because if you can get a revelation of where you walk, then it'll change how you walk. So it's not how we walk, but where we walk. And we walk in Christ. Say, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. So now here's the benefit of believing that you're in Christ. A continuous cleansing. It's a continuous cleansing, saying that the blood is effective right now. It's not just effective 2,000 years ago. It continues to be effective. Glory to God. It's effective right now. It's forever keeping us in, in the light. The blood of Jesus is forever keeping us in the light. It is forever cleansing us. It is, I got to be honest, this is real radical, but I'm going to say it. You go around and you do something you're not supposed to do, this is how it looks. Do something you're not supposed to do, cleanse. Do something you're not supposed to do, cleanse. Do something you're not supposed to do, cleanse. You, you, don't, you don't care. The only place you can carry what you did is in your mind. 
but the blood continues to operate. Oh, but Brother Dollar, it just sounded to me like you're just telling us we can do anything we want to do. I'm trying to show you that if you'll get a revelation of who you are in Christ, you're not going to have to be concerned about doing stuff. You, you're not going to want to do that because as a new person in Christ, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You're never going to know what I'm saying until you start believing who you are in Christ. You're going you're gonna to continue to be religious, and religion tells you you got to always be trying to work to try to make something happen, and that's the biggest enemy. That's the biggest enemy to the favor of God. You keep trying to do something that Jesus has already done. That's the biggest enemy to you being healed. It's the biggest enemy to you prospering. It's the biggest enemy to you being righteous. You trying to do something <laughs> that Jesus has already done. You know what I'm going to do this year? I'm going to work hard at not working. I'm going to work hard at not working because Jesus has already done it. It's not Jesus plus me. It's Jesus all by himself. So tonight, I want to talk to you about the number one enemy to God's favor. Satan has deployed an all-out attack, and it starts with doubting who you really are. See, this is the thing that religion keeps fighting you. Jesus wants you to accept this truth. You're just like him. Religion keeps telling you, not quite. In this series by Creflo Dollar, you will learn to identify the enemy's strategy that will try to move you from God's favor and into doubt and self-effort. Now, I guarantee you the day you accept this truth that I'm just like Jesus, nothing will ever be the same again. Learn this truth and win the battle by getting the number one enemy to God's favor two-message series for a love gift of $12.95 or more. Don't delay. Call the number on the screen or go online to order today. The 2019 Change Experience is coming your way. Join pastors Creflo and Taffy Dollar for one day only. The word is gonna touch you in a way that you've never heard before, and you're gonna be able to understand it in a way that you've never understood it before. So just come. Don't tell me you're the boss and all you wanna do is command folks around and you don't wanna serve anybody. I don't wanna see your title. I want to see your life. But those of you who are born again, you're already in Christ Jesus. Your sins have already been dealt with. You have been forgiven past, present, and future. Oh my God. Judgment Day for you is going to be a party, baby. So if you've not attended a change convention anywhere around this country and around the world, you've got to come. Join us in Detroit at the Cobo Center on May 3rd and in Columbia, South Carolina on June 7th at the Columbia Metro Convention Center. Hurry before time runs out and claim your free seat. Call or go online to register today. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support make it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.